Good day, students. Welcome to your virtual basic science class brought to you by digital science teacher, Mr. Kendi Adeshino. In our last lesson, we discussed about a system of support in living things called the skeletal system. In the lesson of today, we will be looking at a very important system in our body that ensures that we get oxygen to break down food and produce energy needed for all life activities. So we will be looking at the respiratory system. So let's look at the lesson outline and the lesson objective of this lesson. After this lesson, you will be able to define respiration, list the importance of respiration, write a simple equation for respiration, list the parts of human respiratory system, explain the functions of the respiratory organs, explain the stages of respiration, explain the stages of breathing and finally draw a simple diagram of respiratory system and identify the various parts so let's dive in into this important concept every living organisms including plants and animals require energy to carry out all life's activities and also to survive this energy is partly derived from the food we eat and an important biochemical process called respiration. Therefore, all living organisms take in oxygen to break down food substances, that is glucose, to release energy, carbon dioxide and water vapor in a process called respiration. So, by way of definition, respiration is defined as the process whereby living things take in oxygen in order to break down glucose to release energy. A simple chemical equation for respiration is glucose plus six molecules of oxygen producing six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water vapor and energy, which is stored in form of ATP. The full meaning of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. The human respiratory system. The human respiratory system consists of the following parts or organs the nose or nasal cavity, the pharynx, the larynx or voice box, the trachea or windpipe, the lungs, the bronchi, the bronchiolus, the alveoli and the diaphragm. Also associated with the human respiratory system is the rib cage which perform a very important process protecting the diaphragm in the process of respiration. The nostrils leads into the posterior portion of the mouth cavity called the pharynx and this leads into the voice box or larynx. The larynx leads into the windpipe or the trachea a flat piece of tissue called the epiglottis covers the entrance of the larynx to prevent food particles from entering into the larynx and the trachea when food is being swallowed into the esophagus which lies just beneath or behind the trachea the trachea branches into two tubes called bronchi both trachea and the bronchi have free rings of cartilage which strengthens them and prevent them from collapsing when the pressure of the air inside is low. Each bronchus leads into the lungs where it branches 
into small tubes called bronchioles. The bronchioles leads to numerous air sacs called alveoli. And the alveoli are richly supplied with blood vessels. And they are the sites or surface where the actual gaseous exchange takes place. Let us look at the function of each part of the respiratory system, the nose or the nasal cavity. The nose serves as the primary entry point for air. The nasal cavity inside the nose filters incoming air, removes dust and humidifies the air before it reaches the lungs. The mouth and oral cavity. The mouth serves as an alternative entry for air. The oral cavity plays an important role in speech and in swallowing. If the nasal passages are blocked, breathing through the mouth becomes essential. The pharynx or the throat. The pharynx connects the nasal cavity, that is the nose cavity, and the mouth to the trachea. It serves as a common pathway for both air and food. The epiglottis, as I said earlier, is a flap-like structure in the pharynx and it prevents food from entering into the trachea when we swallow food. The larynx or voice box. The larynx is a tough flexible segment of the respiratory tract that connects the pharynx to the trachea. It allows air to pass through it while preventing food and drink from blocking the airways. The trachea or windpipe. The trachea is a wide hollow tube that connects the larynx to the bronchi. It serves to ensure that the air entering the lungs is at an optimal temperature and humidity for efficient gas exchange. The bronchus or bronchi. The bronchi are the main airways into the lungs. So air gets into the lungs through the bronchi. The bronchi are equipped with tiny air-like structures called cilia. And these structures help to move mucus out of the lungs, keeping the bronchi clean and healthy. The bronchioles. The bronchioles are small branching air pathways inside the lungs. They serve as conduits for air, connecting the large bronchi to the alveoli. Bronchioles deliver air to a diffuse network of approximately 300 million alveoli. The alveolus or alveoli. The alveoli are tiny air sacs. In the alveolus, oxygen molecules move through a single layer of lung cells, entering the bloodstream. Simultaneously, carbon dioxide pass from the bloodstream into the alveolus. Now let's look at the stages of respiration. Respiration is divided into two different phases. These are the external respiration or breathing and the internal or tissue respiration. External respiration or breathing. This is the taking in of oxygen into the lungs, a process called inhalation or inspiration, and the breathing out of carbon dioxide and water vapor, a process called exhalation or expiration. Internal or tissue respiration. This is the process of actual breakdown of glucose to release energy carbon dioxide and water vapor. It takes place in the individual cells of the body. The energy released is stored in form of ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate. 
why the carbon dioxide and water vapor are byproducts of respiration. The vivid breathing process consisting of inhalation that is breathing in and exhalation breathing out. Inhalation when you breathe in your diaphragm that is a muscle that is below your lungs moves downward making more space in your chest. This allows your lungs to expand and be filled with air. Oxygen from the air then moves into your bloodstream to be used by your body. Exhalation or breathing out. When you breathe out, your diaphragm moves back up and the space in your chest becomes smaller. This pushes air out of your lungs, getting rid of carbon dioxide, a waste gas that your body don't need. So, breathing is a circle of taking in oxygen and letting out carbon dioxide and water vapor to keep your body working well. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell or notification button so that you will get updates once I upload a new video. Till we meet in class again, keep reading and keep studying because readers are leaders. Thank you. Bye.